Today we're going to be doing one of the most simple yet probably most effective and popular modifications that you can do for this car. Uh, for about 10 minutes of your time and $100, you're going to replace the air filters. We're also going to be removing the charcoal filter. So the combination of going from a factory paper filter and a charcoal filter over to this aftermarket filter should be a pretty big jump. And when I say pretty big jump, I mean, you know, 5, maybe 10 horsepower, I don't know. But we are going to dyno test that. So we're not going to do that today. Eventually, I'm going to get this car in a dyno. We'll get some dyno time. And the plan is we're going to do a back-to-back -back three dyno pulls. Charcoal filter with the factory filter in place. Then we're going to do just the factory filter. So if you have want to keep your factory filter, but you want to delete the charcoal filters, we'll see what benefit that has. And then we're going to do these just by themselves. The reason I'm not going to do the aftermarket filters with the charcoal filters is I don't really see any reason to do that because why would anyone do that? If you're going to take the time and money to put in aftermarket filters, you're probably not going to continue to run your charcoal filter right behind it. But for those of you who know, BMC air filters seem to be the most well-respected aftermarket brand. A lot of people either love or hate K&N. It just kind of depends on where you're coming from. But BMC, everyone seems to agree, is a quality brand. But as you can see, it comes in a really nice box, nice packaging, showing all of the different championships that they've been a part of, uh, most likely with Ferrari because it is an Italian-made filter. It also comes with these nice three stickers, so you have a black one, a white one, and then just a traditional full logo, however you want to put it on your car. We will not be putting any of these on the X5M. This we may be putting inside the airbox, so that it should be easily seen when they're taking out the filters, but it should also warn them, hey, don't throw these away, they are good filters. So as you can see, like any other factory filter, it's got this nice mold all the way around, except you have a different material inside here. This feels like almost a nice polyurethane, maybe. It's actually a nice, sturdy material. You've got your weave all the way through here, that mesh on the outside to give it some rigidity with the oiled cotton on the inside. So pretty much standard fare for an aftermarket filter, but it looks really, really nice. I'm excited to get these in the car. But of course, before we can put these in, we have to go grab the old filters out. So to get to our air filters, there are four T25 torque screws right here, hidden underneath these little bumps. So I'm going to back those out, and then we can get working on the post. Underneath here, on either side, you have a metal post, similar to what held the engine cover down. And this is pressed down onto it, so you're going to just have to pop this up. Same for this right here. So you can see it's loose now, but there is a post here up front. So with those popped up, we should be able to get the air filters out. So you can use tools, you can use a pry bar or something, but I don't see any reason to. You can do it by hand. You saw that I just did without much trouble at all. So we'll slide this piece out right here, and then we'll have access to our air filters. So here we have the factory air filters and we have the factory charcoal filters. These we're also going to be removing today because what they're there for is when the engine is turned off and there is a piston down here, valves are open, there's gasoline that was put in there that was not actually burnt up because the engine was turned off. It comes back up all the way through the air system and back out into the air. I don't really see that being a problem because A, I don't live in California and B, I find it very hard to believe that any significant amount of gas is going to make it all the way through this whole system, all of the intercoolers, everything, and then back out through these regular air filters and cause any sort of significant greenhouse gases. So I don't really see them being worth it. It's just a second filter. So removing these is super easy. All you're going to do is press up from the bottom and you're going to compress it and you'll feel a pop and then you just roll it up. So you're trying to pop the bottom out first and roll it vertical, and that's how you're gonna pop these out. So they come out super easy. I think the thicker end is a little easier to start with and work your way down, but they're that easy to come out. Take our factory filters out. Not sure what brand these are. They're Molly filters, so it's good to know that they were getting a nice quality filter, and these actually look like be in pretty good shape. So I might even keep these just as a backup for some reason. So we'll go ahead and pop those out, clean all this up, we'll go compare all these on the bench real quick, and then we'll pop in those BMC filters. One thing to note with all the filters out of the way, you can see right here on the back of the airbox, there's these three little hooks here, and three right here. 
to grab into them. So what you're going to have to do is when you're sliding this back in, is slide this under, lifting this up a little bit, and making sure the back latches so you can't pull it forward anymore, and then you can put your screws in. So it's a little bit easier to do without the filters, so I would practice at least once before trying to put it back in with the filters. It's a little bit of a job because this is still connected to the intake piping. But the difference you can see is here where they sit flush on the car, and you can see how much taller the factory filter is. You've got all this paper filter, you've got a bunch of room back here. So this one has the same exact gap on the bottom and on the top. It's just a much thicker filter. You also have a much higher number of pleats, but this material is much thinner. So you've got thicker material here, but it should provide a lot better airflow while hopefully providing a very similar quality of filtering to keep the engine safe. Now, like I said, we did also remove the charcoal filter, so the charcoal filter will sit underneath this. So if you look, it's going to be flush with the charcoal filter in here. So you can't see the charcoal filter. It fills in that little gap. So imagine the difference being when you remove this charcoal filter, the thickness of this, the actual thickness, is probably only half of this red height right here. So you're really going from maybe an inch of thickness of actual filter material to here probably four inches thick of filter material. So definitely a lot of material that we are removing by not running the charcoal and the paper filter and just going with this. So it should be something we can actually feel in the car. But like I said, once we get to the dyno, we can actually test what difference does the charcoal filter make and what does the difference between these two make. Hopefully, it is something that's actually measurable. But even if it's not that big of a difference, these are reusable, so eventually I should break even on these. But let's go throw these in. Well, I decided to clean this little area off that sits under the air box and put our sticker here. So nice and stealth, no one will know it's there until they take the air box out and they're like, oh, hey, you know, I don't need these other filters. I can just clean these up and return those. So it should help the next owner. If One thing to note though, is to get these to install properly, there were two little lips here that stuck out either side of this center bar, and they take up this gap right here on the stock piece. Well, this is the height of the aftermarket piece all the way around. So that little lip that sits right here that keeps this in place is no longer needed because this is full thickness all the way up. So the stock piece still fits in and it's still retained nicely. Like there's nothing wrong with the stock piece. It's still going to seal all the way around on the actual intake side. So I'm not really sure why that's there. All I had to do was pull this little pin out. There's one here and one on the bottom. So one down here. Pull those two pins out, pry out this little push rivet, and then I can pull this piece out, cut it. It cuts super easy. It's plastic, so a hacksaw just zipped right through it. And now I can slide both of our filters in. They fit nice and snug. And just like that, we have a loaded air box. We can go ahead and slide it back in, get everything buttoned up, and now we can go for a drive. Well, we have those BMC intakes installed. We have our carbon filters removed. So now we're out driving around. I want to see if I can feel a difference. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, no, I probably can't. Even if it's 10 horsepower, which I think would be a little bit of an optimistic expectation. I don't think you're going to be able to feel 10 horsepower on a car that weighs over 5,000 pounds and has 550 horsepower. But I'm never going to pass up an opportunity to go out and drive this hard. It is always a blast. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the sport. I've got the in button pressed. We've got a little bit of a gap to the traffic in front of us. Let's go down to second gear. And I'm just going to floor it and see if I can tell. <laughs> uh, no, I can't tell from a roll. Let's see what it does from a dig. We'll see if I can find a good gap in traffic here. Uh, traffic is pretty heavy in the other direction, so I'm going to loop back around and check in with you guys when I get a gap. All right, here we go. <laughs> I can't tell a difference. I mean, maybe if I did a back-to-back, -back, you could tell, but it's still hilarious. I do think you get a tiny bit more engine intake noise, 
Um, not a whole lot. Of course, the car is very well insulated and you have a lot going on under the hood on top of just those little intakes. But I do think you can hear it a little bit more. But like I said, we're going to do those dyno runs. We're going to get our back to back. We're going to see how much power are you actually getting out of this modification. I'm very, very excited for that video. I think it should be very helpful. I don't think it's going to really change anyone's mind unless it loses power, which I don't see any way that it possibly could. But if nothing else, they're reusable, they're very high quality. So I'm going to keep running it and I cannot wait for that dyno day. So stay tuned for that. Drop some comments below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.